Hello and welcome to the Vicar's Wife's Frugal Life Emergency Corona Edition. My name is Rhiannon, I am your host, I am the only host, um, and I am a Vicar's Wife, as the name would suggest. I'm also a mum to baby uh, Oberon and also my greyhound, because fur babies count too. Um, I'm a wife um, and I'm also I'm also, should have been the first thing I said, it's my career. I am a freelance opera singer and also a music teacher. I teach singing and piano. That's how I play the piano. Pia, pia, piano. And apparently that's how I sing. Oh good lord, there's gonna be no hope for me after this virus blows over, is there? Right, so a little bit about me um, just after the personal things is I was once, uh, my husband and I were in about £30,000 worth of consumer debt and we managed to claw our way out of it um, through really intentional money management and now we have started sort of amassing wealth. I mean that in a very modest way, but the idea is that we have emergency savings and we're putting money towards a house deposit and we... Uh, don't live beyond our means, that's basically it. Um, so that is who I am and that's what I do on this channel. I talk about things like that. So, probably the reason that most of you are here is that you're self-employed and you are losing work because of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, you have my absolute utmost sympathy. This video I really hope will be useful for people who have debts or maybe don't have any emergency savings, but also for people who might have savings but just want to be able to top those up and find ways to fill their time and make their financial situation a bit safer going forward. So I hope you find some ideas. Two caveats before I start. Number one caveat, I am not an accountant nor a financial advisor nor am I in any way otherwise qualified to give you any financial advice. I am just a ranty woman on the internet that wants to give you ideas and give you more financial freedom. So please take everything I say with a pinch of salt and do your own research before you make any money decisions. Uh, but hopefully I can point you in the right direction towards some good resources. Caveat number two nothing I say on this channel is going to apply to 100% of people. Everyone's personal financial situation is just as different as their personal situation. I don't know what your income is, I don't know if you have children or dependents, I don't know if you have sick parents, I don't know if you are have a chronic illness, I just don't know because I'm not sitting in your living room. Um, so I hope you find something useful in these videos. Not everything will apply to everyone, these are just some ideas from my head. Before we get started, and I know there's been quite a few of, before I get started, caveat, all of those things, uh, but before we get started, this is going to be a stressful time financially for a lot of people, especially self-employed people. So please make sure you find someone that you can talk to about your finances. If that's a partner and you can calmly talk about it, then that's great. If it's a friend, then that's also marvellous. If it's your great auntie Nora, good old Auntie Nora, then please make sure you're checking with them on the phone, uh, if nothing else, uh, because you may need some emotional support, especially if you feel the pressure of uh, debt or payments that you're not being able to meet then you will need to be able to talk about it with someone. I'll also put links for things like the Samaritans and some money advice uh, charities down below. There are gonna be so many links in this video. It's gonna be like an essay in itself. The other thing I would add is that you have to think of all the steps that I'm gonna to talk to you about today as a job in itself. Um, unless you work really efficiently at 11 o'clock at night, um, Googling, panic Googling whether or not you're eligible for universal credit isn't necessarily a healthy thing to do. But if you think about this as a job in itself now, that you have to sit down and sort out your financial situation and alleviate some of the burdens you might be facing, then hopefully you will feel more comfortable about it. So set out blocks of time for each task and check in with that friend after each block. So you're looking after yourself or just take a nice long bath, maybe a walk, do some yoga, stroke your cat, play the banjo, whatever you need to do, whatever floateth your boateth, okay? Now that's enough caveats and side notes, let's get started. Number one, you need to chase those invoices. Is there any money that's not currently in your bank account that is owed to you? Now, from the day in UK law, um, and I hope I get this right, there'll be a link down below. In UK law, from the date that you either issue the invoice or the date that the person um, or the, the company has received the product or service, they have 30 days to make that payment. After that, you are allowed to add on a late payment charge. Um, now, under current guidelines in UK law, this is 8% annually plus the Bank of England's base rate, which I think is 0.25% at the moment. It just changed at the budget the other day. 
So um, I'll put a link on how to calculate that uh, down below, but that can be an incentive and you can remind people of that. That is something you're legally entitled to do. So please remind people of that to get them to pay you your money. Obviously also exercise some compassion. If you're chasing a massive multinational, oh goodness, chase them till the cows come home. But please remember that other people might be going through a similar thing to you at this time. Um, so I'll leave that up to your common sense and uh, your own moral compass on who you hound. Um, but please make sure you're chasing up the money that's owed to you. You should be looking at what you're owed at least once a week and chasing that up and making sure you've invoiced for it and making sure that people are aware that you are waiting for your money. You are waiting for your money. Number two is going to be possibly the most important thing that you do. And that is you need to reduce or eliminate your discretionary spending. What is discretionary spending? Well, discretionary spending is anything that isn't your four walls um, or something that enables to get you to work. So you need to be able to keep paying for the place you live. You need to be able to put some sort of food on the table. I'm not talking about caviar and sirloin steak, but you know, if it's a well-balanced meal of rice and beans, uh, then so be it. Um, you also need to be able to get to work and you need to be able to look after your dependents. So if your kids need a new pair of school shoes, you need to be able to buy that for them. You need to be able to continue feeding them, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so discretionary spending is none of those things. Those are the basics we need to stay alive and keep functioning. But I'm talking about eating out, takeaways, lattes, hair appointments, um, brrr, new clothes, anything like that. So that needs to get out of your budget. Either entirely, you need to go on a no spend month if sit your situation is really bad, or if you're just worried about how long your savings might last, then maybe it's a reduction in those things. And actually, when you gamify it, when you say to your spouse or your partner or just to yourself, if you're a single person, this is actually gonna be easier for you, you make it into a game and you see, okay, how can we spend as little money as possible this week on food, but still eat balanced, healthy meals? Let's make a meal plan. Um, okay, my friend wanted to meet for lunch and we were gonna go and get our nails down, done, but actually, could we go for a walk in the park with a little picnic and then, I don't know, do some contemporary dance uh, to express ourselves underneath an oak tree? I mean, that's not something I've done this week this week um but have a think a bit outside the box i'm not saying you need to stop having any experiences or stop having fun uh but maybe you need to make a fake away instead of ordering a takeaway okay so reduce and or eliminate your discretionary expenses it's so important because you will not believe how much money we're actually spending most people in this country outside of their four walls of necessities number three you need to contact your bank and your creditors and also hmrc Let's break it down. So the people that you owe money to, if you have any debts, so anything from a mortgage to a car loan or car finance to a credit card or an overdraft, anything like that, anyone that you owe money to, write down a list and you're going to go through the list and you're going to carve out some time each morning or afternoon and you're going to call them and you're going to talk to them about your reduced circumstances financially and you're going to ask them what they can do for you. So things like a credit card or a personal loan, they may be happy for you to reduce your payments each month um, and they'll agree with that, that with you in advance. Um, mortgages, be careful with mortgages because um, they can give you uh, sometimes a mortgage holiday um, and a payment holiday on your mortgage, uh, but that can affect your credit score. Again, you've got to leave that up to your own um, personal situation and think about it, what you want to do, but those are some options. Lenders would generally much prefer to reduce your payments than have to chase you for them. So for instance, if you've got a payment, let's say of £150 a month that you're meant to be paying, um, if you call them and say, explain the situation and say, do you know what, I need to reduce it to £100 a month, then they may be amenable to that because it means they're not going to have to chase you. You're not going to start defaulting on payments because actually that ends up costing them money in the long term. So you need to make a list of all those people and you need to go down the list one by one even if it's one a day, and start having those conversations. 
it's really going to help and it's going to give you peace of mind and it's also going to allow you to know really how you can wiggle all of these amounts down even if you end up paying a little bit of interest extra over the next few years on whatever you owe money on if it can alleviate the immediate situation um, especially because we don't know how long this is going to last necessarily then I would really recommend doing that call up the people you owe money to it's really really important Number four, no matter what country you live in, you need to figure out what benefits you're eligible for. In the UK, as a self-employed person, there are two main ones that I think you should look up. Those are employment support allowance and universal credit. Employment support allowance can come in useful for you if you are sick, so or if you're self-isolating because of illness. If you actually can contract coronavirus, coronavirus, if you actually contract coronavirus, or you are self-isolating for any reason, then this can be useful for you. You can claim on it if you've been paying national insurance for two to three years. You have to check eligibility on that, but that would be about £73.10 a week, depending on how old you are. So that's definitely something to consider if you're actively suffering from an illness or self-isolating due to an illness. Please check that one. The government guidelines have also changed on it. It used to be that you could only claim from day eight of the illness, but now it's day one. So that's an extra incentive. It's a small incentive, but it's an extra incentive to stay home. I know it's not much, but £73 a week is better than no pounds a week. That's not me condoning the current benefit system in the country at all, but if that's what you're eligible for and it's between that and nothing, take the money, okay? Universal credit system, this one could take much longer to come through, it could take up to five weeks, so you really need to figure this one out sooner. Universal credit, this one is going to be good for you if you've got savings under £16,000, and this could pay you a bit more than the employment support allowance, and this is if you've got cancelled gigs, basically. There's very strict rules on how many hours you can work a week and how much money you can earn a week um, and I'm not going to go into all of them. I think it's much more helpful for you to go onto the eligibility criteria and there are benefits checker yourself. Again, find a buddy to talk about this with maybe and that you can help and support each other through this application. Again, these forms can be complicated and a bit convoluted and sometimes impenetrable, impenetrable, gosh if you can't speak like me, impenetrable if you have certain sorts of access requirements but please buddy up and have someone help you and coach you through it and you can help them and support them and that'd be a really good idea and my tip for you even if you're doing it from long distance but please please get on top of the benefits you're eligible for and could possibly apply for before you end up having to wait five weeks when it really, really, really is urgent. So I really implore you to have a look at that. Number five, sell so much stuff the kids think they're next. Have a look around your house and sell the things you don't need. I'm not talking about the things you really need and I'm not talking about the things you really, really love, but have a look around the house, think if there's any furniture, jewelry, clothes, shoes, books, CDs, DVDs, whatever. If you can get over a quid for it, get it online. Um, you can sell on eBay, Facebook Marketplace is really good for bigger items, Spock, um, also the Nextdoor app is great, um, so I really, really recommend looking those up, um, and uh, yeah, just start selling stuff, okay, especially if you're having all your work cancelled, there's no excuse not to, I know some people find it intimidating, again, buddy up, um, and talk through it, gamify it, see who can make the most money of the people that live in your house share, or, you know, who from the kids can raise enough money to put in the emergency fund. I don't know. I'm sure you can think of much better ways to make it into game than I can, but that money, when you've got it, that's gonna go in your emergency pot to help you if you end up running out of money or having things canceled. That's gonna be really, really helpful. So you will really be really surprised at how much it can add up. Um, and plus you have a more decluttered and spacious home. So that will be a nice secondary benefit from that. Number six, again, look around your home and see if you can save your future self any money. So, if you're sitting twiddling your thumbs, can you, um, I don't know, craft some Christmas presents so that you don't have to spend as much money next year? Can you batch cook loads of meals and put them in the freezer to save yourself time and money in the future? Can you do a bit of DIY that you'd normally get someone else in for? Watch a YouTube video and do it yourself. Can you do some gardening and plant some seeds that would give you some food in the summer months? Honestly, all these small actions might seem a bit ridiculous and oh, it's just a pound here, or it's just a few quid there. 
when you put hundreds of things of those together then you might just about have made up one gig so I really 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 recommend it all these really small things you can get the kids involved in some stuff if you've got those or your well-trained cat we don't have a cat but maybe I should think about a well-trained cat um, okay so please look around the house and see how you can help your future self save time and money even if it's not going to save you loads of time or make you any money in the short term your future self will uh, really thank you especially if they've got increased debt payments to make uh, because of this precarious time Number seven, I want you to look at all of your bills and I want you to see if you can reduce them. So electricity, gas, uh, any insurance that's coming up. Remember car insurance, you need to renew 21 days before your renewal date. That's when you're going to get the best price. Things like that, really have a think. Um, also look at your subscriptions. So go through your bank account, look at all those recurring payments. Can you get rid of Netflix for a few months? Can you stop having an audible description and go to the library instead? Also check if you've got an iTunes account or somewhere that you might have subscriptions through apps, anything like that, then go through those subscriptions. Just make sure things aren't going to recur without you noticing. That's a way to save loads of money because those little things can really add up and we don't notice. It's sort of, um, you know, that death by a thousand cuts as well with all these tiny things that I'm mentioning and they really will add up. Again, take a day to look at this. Every little helps. Number eight, contact your union or people that do the same job as you and see if there are any hardship funds. So I'm a musician. In the UK, we have, what's it called now? It used to be called Musicians Benevolent Fund, but we have Help Musicians UK. Um, and sometimes they can help artists um, in difficulties. I know for lots of different um, jobs, there might be different charities that might help people in different professions um, with small hardship grants. Again, it might only be 50 pounds or 100 pounds, it may be more, uh, but that money might really help if it can help you keep the lights on and keep food in your tummy. If you feel any shame around money that you owe or your difficult financial situation, I really encourage to find someone to talk to about it and be open about it. Money is really taboo in this country, but please, your net worth does not define your self-worth. So you're not a number and it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor or somewhere in between, it doesn't tell me who you are as a person. So exercise that muscle in your brain. My net worth does not define my self-worth. My net worth does not define my self-worth. You might be embarrassed about it in the short term, but in the long term, I promise you, finding someone to talk about your financial situation will be the most amazing thing you can ever do in your financial life. Um, it's been really liberating for me. Look at me, I'm on the internet talking about it, so here I go. Number nine, invest in a new skill that can help you in the future in your business. So whether you do baby music classes and you really want to learn to play the saxophone because you think that could really help bring in the punters, now's the time to learn the saxophone and use a YouTube video if you can find a saxophone lying around. Um, maybe you've always wanted to learn how to do some carpentry um, and you've had those things sitting in the, in the shed or the garage for a while. Now's the time to go on YouTube and actually put your money where your mouth is, all right? Also, maybe some more practical skills. Um, it would involve spending money, but in the long term, I think it could be a good idea if you have a little bit to put aside. There are a lot of courses online, especially on something like Udemy, which I thought was pronounced Udemy. I'll put the link to that and you can buy a course for maybe 10, 15 pounds um, that will teach you about digital marketing or how to make your own website. And actually, if you've got the time to invest in that now, it can save you hundreds, if not thousands of pounds in the future because you're not having to outsource it. A few other suggestions would be bookkeeping, a basic accountancy course. You know, can you imagine being self-employed and never having to pay an accountant again? I pay for my accountant for peace of mind, but what if actually your self-employed accounts were really quite basic and you could just do it yourself? And a 15 pound course could help you do that. And you can learn things for free, obviously. YouTube, oh my goodness, what an amazing resource. But you can learn so much online for free. Um, and keeping your brain ticking over and learning new things, having a new project can be no bad thing. Especially if you're isolated and feeling a bit sad and a bit down. Keeping those little grey matter active can be really, really helpful. So that's one way of investing, I guess, in your mental health as well as your financial health further down the line. You need to get a side hustle, okay? Your side hustle can be anything from, I don't know, 
painting mason jars and putting them on Etsy to copyright, copy reading, copy reading, uh, proofreading someone's CV on the app Fiverr where people do small tasks for five pounds. Um, it could be online tutoring, giving didgeridoo lessons on the internet. I don't know, but think about what side hustles you can do um, that might enable your business to carry on in some way, or at least you're making a little bits of money and drips and drabs. Another thing I would mention, especially if you've got kids and you've got no childcare and you're finding it difficult to concentrate, um, a lot of people in the debt-free community use apps um, that they get little bits of money from and these really add up so I'm going to put a link to lots of those. Massive disclaimer I have never used any of those apps so I can't tell you if they're good or not these have been suggested by people that I know so I think they're worth having a look at um, and I do know that people by just you know spending five minutes here and there maybe scanning in a receipt maybe doing an online survey do get, you know, 50p here, two quid there, and over the month it can really add up, you know, to over 100, if not over 200 pounds. It's worth having a look and having another string on your bow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Finally, can you get ahead on any of your work? So, can you make sure that email inbox is empty? Can you think about some new projects you might want to do? fill in some funding proposals for a new, a new project you want to do in the future? Can you redesign your website? Can you think about your marketing strategy, strategy for the next year? Uh, think about how you can get ahead for when all of this is over and we can get on with our lives. So have a really good think about that sort of thing. Tax return is coming up. Get your tax return done really early for once in your life. I mean, note to self. Finally, I know it's been a long one, but there's been quite a few little bits of information I want to impart, and I know it's a whistle-stop tour, but hopefully the links can help you, and at least this gives you a load of things that you can do to now action. If you have any more ideas, please let me know, and I can make another follow-up video, or put some information on my Instagram account. Uh, please follow me on Instagram, The Vicar's Wife's Frugal Life. Well, I always share um, things that come into my head on my Instagram stories, and sometimes on my grid, so. That's one thing. And really finally, please look after your mental health as well as your physical health during this time. I think especially around money, there can be so much anxiety. And remember money, money and money issues can be the leading cause of divorce and suicide. Honestly, money, people underestimate it all the time. So the Samaritans are on 116123. It's a free phone number. That's 116123. If you really feel like you haven't got anyone to talk to, please keep having warm baths. Go for a walk if you can. If you can't, do some stretching at home and yoga. Make sure you've got some nice warm tea and a comfy blanket and a nice book to curl up and enjoy. Keep phoning your friends and your family members to check in with them if you are isolated and keep checking in with yourself. Write your gratitude lists, look out the window, open the window for some fresh air, look at the trees, watch the planes stopping flying through the air probably quite soon. Please, if I've missed anything out or if I've made any mistakes, let me know in the comments and I can amend that and put some extra links in. If you have any great resources for anything like this um, or any personal uh, ideas that you have, please let me know um, because I think this is a time we all need to bandy together um, and make sure that as many people have as much relevant and accessible information as possible because around personal finance, it's so easy to be covered in jargon um, and it's difficult to wade through. If I've not been clear about enough about anything, please let me know and I can break down some of these things into different videos. Um, I've had all my work cancelled for the next week, so I have some free time. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll be seeing you more soon than I usually do. I realise I've not posted a video since January, but I'm going to get on it like a car bonnet. Massive hugs to you and I hope this all blows over as soon as possible. Hug your loved ones tight but only after you've washed your hands and sung happy birthday about 25 times um, and sometimes forgo the hugs. I think that's important to say as well. Sometimes it will be important to stay away. Um, I know I'm really worried about um, some of our parishioners who are maybe more advanced in years with underlying health conditions. <sighs> Lots of love people. Keep strong and keep talking to each other. Look after yourselves. Bye.